I'm R.K. Walker here at NASDAQ Market Site. Alongside me today is Luisa Ingargiola, CFO of Magna Gas Corporation. Welcome to the show, Luisa. Thank you very much for having me. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your company? Magna Gas Corporation was founded in 2007 through the reverse merger into a clean shell. We traded on the OTCBB until about 2012 when we uplisted to NASDAQ. It's a technology company that converts liquid waste into a hydrogen-based fuel. It was founded by Dr. Ruggiero Santilli, who's a former scientist from Harvard and MIT, and he's an environmentalist. Um, he actually worked over 30 years of research and development for this technology. And his belief is that the days of trucking fuel across the country or across the globe are of the past millennium. The future millennium, we should be producing fuel where we need it, when we need it, from a local feedstock. And that's his vision for the company. You've got several lines of business. You've got metalworking, fuel. Uh, what was the other one? Uh, Co-combustion. Co-combustion. Okay, why don't you tell us a little bit about each of your lines? Sure. Um, well, first of all, the technology works through the uh, concept of a lightning chamber. So if you can imagine a lightning chamber, we force liquid at a high rate of speed through this lightning chamber at 10,000 degrees. Mm -hmm. And as a result of this interaction, we end up with a hydrogen-based fuel that bubbles to the surface. This hydrogen-based fuel is a natural gas alternative, and we sell it in the metalworking market. Um, the reason we sell it in the metalworking market is it has an extremely hot flame temperature. So we compete against acetylene. Um, the metalworking market is actually a $5 billion industry, and we believe we have the only green renewable source for that industry. Um, the other business lines that we have are uh, what we call co-combustion. And essentially, because we have such a hot flame temperature, when you mix it with hydrocarbon fuels and recombust it, all of our testing has shown that it reduces emissions by up to 40% and increases the heat output of that hydrocarbon fuel. So we're working very closely in the coal industry. And the last one was the uh, liquid waste processing we um, actually can convert sewage, sludge, manure, or even oils into a hydrogen-based fuel. And that's another market that we pursue, is the actual sale of the equipment. And this plasma technology, you've actually patented. Yes, it's a totally patented technology. We own all the patents outright. We don't have any clawback provisions or anything like that with the inventor. For your purification, mm -hmm. you, you can put in any kind of waste material. It purifies it. Uh, and then what's, what's left? Okay. Um, well, we have two types of systems. One is with water-based waste, so that would be like a sewage, a sludge, or a manure. Um, in that case, we end up with the fuel. We end up with a sterilized liquid that can be used for irrigation or fertilizer. And then we end up with a small amount of carbon that um, currently we dispose of. Um, in the second liquid, which is an oil-based liquid, for example, we're processing used cooking oil, um, all we have is as a byproduct is the actual fuel itself and then the carbon residue, which um, ends up being a small amount at the end of the process. Which is the path you're choosing to pursue right now most vigorously? Well, we have two paths that are producing revenue today. One is the metalworking market, um, which we're pursuing very aggressively, and uh, we've had some pretty significant announcements lately uh, in that area. And then the second is the sale of equipment for the sterilization of water-based waste. Um, to that end, we're working very closely with the United Nations uh, to place these systems internationally. There's a lot of developing countries that have severe need for uh, clean water, and at the same time, a fuel. And so we're partnering with um, groups from the UN to provide funding and, and partners on the ground. Um, the third one, the co-combustion, is actually the most exciting, but that is um, really still in an R&D stage. We've partnered with one of the largest utilities in the country, uh, their research center, and we have actually processing and testing magna gas combined with coal to reduce emissions as we speak. But that's really a late 2015, early 2016 revenue event versus mm -hmm. the other two that are producing revenue now. Has the recent decline in oil prices been a challenge for your company in any way? No, I think from a macroeconomic level, it may have put some uh, pressure on our stock, but from a business level, it hasn't impacted us. Uh, the reason is that we're really not competing against oil. We're selling gas into the metalworking market. And um, in that case, we're competing against acetylene, which really isn't dependent on oil pricing uh, very heavily. Well, you touched on that before, um, the, the metalworking market. You've had mm -hmm. a couple big announcements this month mm -hmm. uh, related to that. Do you want to elaborate a little more? I think you had a utility contract. Yeah. That yes, absolutely. Uh, one of the um, challenges that we had in the metalworking market was we're the new kid on the block, and nobody believes that we're as good as we say we are. Uh, so we've worked very hard to bring in true uh, elite partners in that area, 
And just in the last two months, we've announced that the New York Fire Department, after 18 months of testing, has uh, selected Bandagas, their uh, special ops unit, to replace uh, settling and other coming methods. We've uh, had a major utility that we uh, is remaining confidential right now that is in the process of switching over from acetylene to mana gas. And we just recently announced uh, a huge demolition project out in California for the world's largest privately owned winery, winery that um, is going to be using mana gas. So what we're doing is showing uh, the market that we have a viable product, we have viable pro uh, partners that are bringing it to, to market. This new technology is always met with skepticism. Yes. And, and yours is no different. Do you finally think you've kind of hit the tipping point with the FDN, FDNY accepting it? Do you think this is going to get the ball rolling even faster now? That's a great question. We actually have seen that across all three of our business lines. Uh, we're new in liquid waste, we're new in co-combustion, and we're new in metalworking. So we've worked very hard uh, in those areas. In the metalworking, yes, I think we're finally at the tipping point where people really believe that we're here to stay and we're a great product. Uh, in the liquid waste area, we've spent a lot of time and energy in the last 24 months uh, getting independent verification of what we're doing to show that the results are valid. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, we're partnering with major players in the industry. For example, there's a major hog farm in Indiana that is working with us on the sterilization side uh, that we believe is going to bring a lot of credibility to the technology. Right now, uh, you, you seem to be going into, into specific areas or companies. Uh, if this really catches on big, can you ramp up the ability to produce this gas in large enough quantities for like massive, mass, uh, large players? Yes, we believe that we have the capacity to uh, ramp up pretty rapidly. Uh, we have a group of uh, independent contractors that are trained on the assembly and the, and the testing of the technology. Uh, we have a very large manufacturing facility that's available to us if we need to ramp up quickly. Uh, certainly that would be a great problem to have, mm -hmm. uh, but we believe that we're prepared if it, in the event that it does occur. Mm -hmm. So what are your time frames here? What are your goals for this year and next year? Uh, our goals for this year are uh, essentially to roll out, uh, continue to roll out the metalworking market and the liquid waste market through these uh, elite partners in mm -hmm. both areas and to obtain our uh, certification of results from the co-combustion from the Utility Research Center. Any thoughts on to why now is a particularly good time to invest in your stock? Um, well, we believe that the stock has several major catalysts that are going to impact uh, its valuation over the coming months, just with all the partners that we're working with and, and all the testing that we're doing and the anticipated sales that we were working with. Uh, so we believe that the future is very bright for the company, and of course all managers believe their stock is undervalued, but we believe that it's a very fair uh, undervalued uh, valuation right now based on where we believe we can be in 24 months. Mm -hmm. Louisa, unfortunately, that's all we have time okay. for today. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank again our guest, Louisa Ingargiola, CFO of Magnagas Corporation. I'm R.K. Walker. Thank you for joining us, and I'll see you again next time.